everybody. Hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. I thought I would do a tutorial today for the Designs by Juju composition notebook covers. Look at these. Aren't these awesome? These fit on the nine and three quarter by seven and a half inch wide composition notebook. I picked this up at Dollar General for, well, a dollar. <laughs> but I just love these. This is some leftover scrap fabric that I had uh, from a nursing cover I made my daughter-in-law when she was expecting all my grandbabies and I really like these 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 are so fun to make and they're pretty simple once you get the first part of it down there's three hoopings on this once you get that first hooping down you'll be like oh I know how to do this now I, I see what they're talking about and so this one here check this out so this one does not have a pen pocket so you can make these without a pen pocket or you can make them with a pen pocket what do you think of this tulip pink fabric how awesome is this look at that owl isn't he something and then we've got the bugs on the back so you need four pieces of fabric three three or four coordinating fat quarters works fine and of course an embroidery machine I will be using the brother luminaire courtesy of allbrands.com and I am using uh, my stabilizer is a cutaway poly mesh I'm using a 7511 organ needle in the machine and I'm using regular standard I have lots of different brands of embroidery thread I think this is brother embroidery thread and this one is uh, Madeira poly neon so you're just gonna need uh, I just wanted to tell you what I'm using in mine, but let me quickly go through what you're going to need in order to do this project. First of all, you need the instructions. If you can print them out in color, all the better because it's it's easier to see what's what when they're in color. So if you can, if you can't, that's okay. You'll still get through it just fine. As I said, I'm using three pieces of poly cutaway in a nine by fourteen hoop. I'm going to make the design that goes and works in the 6x10 hoop, but I don't have a 6x10 hoop handy, so 9x14 it is. I have three pieces of batting for the front, back, and the spine of the book. You need two pieces of fabric for the front and back covers. You need two pieces of fabric folded in half, wrong sides together. This is a solid, so it's kind of hard to tell, but you can see it's folded in half. If you have a solid, it doesn't matter which way you fold it, but you definitely need, these are your flaps. Those are your inside flaps. You need two of those. You need two pieces of lining fabric, and you need one piece of fabric for the spine, and then if you want to add the pen pocket, you need a piece of fabric for that. For your embellishments, you're going to need a piece of elastic. I chose some fold-over elastic for this particular one you're going to need some tape this is Kimberbell tape but you can use first aid tape for that you're going to need a fairly small ruler that you have you can see at least a inch inch and a half on that you're going to need both of those measurements one inch and one and a half inches hopefully you don't need a seam ripper that's a pretty one my husband made for me you're going to need a good pair of curved embroidery scissors. If you're going to be doing embroidery, you definitely want to invest in a pair of these and don't go cheap. These are Gingers. They've lasted me already 10 years and they're going to last another 20 probably or longer. And then you're going to need a piece of ribbon for the bookmark inside there. Now not required but helpful is a firm surface to be able to rest your hoop on when it's time to trim away the batting and any excess fabric. So that's all you really need to do this. I also highly recommend that you label your fabrics, especially if your front and back cover are different. And then also, if you're gonna use directional fabric, you need to pay attention to that and just kind of keep that in mind as we go through the process. Just for some overall instructions, it's kind of counterintuitive, but we're gonna do the back cover first. So we'll do the back cover first, then the front cover, and then the spine, and we'll put everything together after that. But it is three separate hoopings, starting with the back cover. When it comes to changing threads, there's really only 
two colors that you need in order to make this. You can change your threads out more than that if you want, but you really only need two. And you, the, the two threads that you need are going to be quilted, a quilting pattern, a quilting pattern that's on your front and back cover and a quilting pattern that's going to happen on your spine fabric. I'm using this I'm using this deep navy and then there is a strong satin stitch on the project and it requires a contrast color of thread. Let me show you what I mean. Here on this one can you see the teal thread right there that's on top of the satin stitch purple. You don't have to. You can skip the step if you don't have any contrasting color uh, that you like, but it's kind of a nice little embellishment that's there. Okay, so to make this project, like I said, there's three different hoopings. There's also three different embroidery files. And when you purchase the file from Designs by Juju, and these are on sale 45% off through June 1st right now. And when you purchase the file, you're going to get different files that have vertical stitch lines like this. Let's see. I use the squares on both of these. See the quilting? And they're squares. You have a choice of vertical stitch lines in the spine. There are other patterns as well. I think there's a stipple. So you have vertical lines in the spine. If you look at this one, you have horizontal quilting in the spine and then you have a choice of either one of uh, vertical or horizontal with a pen holder on it. So just kind of look at that and see which one you want to do and make a choice. But you are going to save three different files to either a USB stick to take to your uh, embroidery machine or you're going to wirelessly send three embroidery files to like I am on the Luminaire. That's how I did that. So let's get started. File types look like when you purchase from Designs by Juju for the composition notebook covers. This is set to and it comes with two different sizes. It comes with, you see right here, it comes with the six by 10 or it comes with the seven by 12. You can see these icons and what these files look like because I am using Imbrilliance Thumbnailer on my laptop and I will link to that below as well. This is so handy to be able to see what it is that you're looking at. So you're going to need three different files. So in, for instance, here is the horizontal spine. There's those horizontal lines I was talking about. And here, over here on the right, here's the vertical lines for the 6 by 10 Here's vertical for 7 by 12. So pay attention to exactly what it is you need. This is the 6 by 10 horizontal. And then here is the 6 by 10 horizontal. See that dark line right there? That is the pen holder. So that's how you can tell them apart. Here is the squares overall quilting. There's a back there. And it, it, it looks funny the way it's laying sideways but it works just fine you just this is the 7 by 12 so kind of watch when you pick your files from your download if you're only going to do the 6 by 10 or only going to do the 7 by 12 be sure to pick the right size for each one of these these are the these ones here in the middle are the stippling all over stippling covers just kind of keep all of that in mind. So the one we're going to do today, let's see, where is it? Here's the front six by 10 squares. Here is the back six by 10 squares. And here is the vertical six by 10 with a pen holder. So those are the three files I'm going to use. Just don't want you to be confused when you see multiple files and they all look the same. You need to pay attention to the size. And then you need to pay attention to front, spine, or back. A little hint too, I made myself, this is a little tape farm, I call it. 
So I have all the pieces of tape that I'm going to need for this particular project ready to go. Alright, I'm ready to get started. So the very first thing we're going to do is do a outline for the batting. It's just very step by step by step. And if I make a mistake or the, something happens, a thread break, I'm going to go ahead and leave that in the video and that way you can see maybe the bobbin runs out, who knows. But, it, you know, I'm going to show you when mistakes happen, how to fix them. Because when you're armed with that kind of knowledge, you can take on anything, right? Let's go to the Luminaire. At the Luminaire, you're going to hit Embroidery. And it is in the memory, so I'm going to touch Pocket. And I sent it wirelessly, so I'll touch the wireless. And I need to find a notebook back. These are all in alphabetical order. So there it is, notebook back. Touch that. Hit set. Again, I'm doing the 6x10. And so I'm just going to hit embroidery. This is going to be 10.22 by 5.87 inches. Remember, it's just the back, it's, and it, it doesn't include the spine. So, And then it has 4,566 stitches. There are seven color changes. And here you can see that the first design is right here, and it is one minute long. And these will continue to move up as the design goes through its sequencing. I'm going to place my batting so that it covers the stitch line by at least one half inch all the way around. And you can tell by folding up the edge just a little bit and taking a check, making sure that everything is fully covered. If your batting has some little bumps, just make sure those are down. And this looks good. You can tape this down, you don't have to, it'll kind of want to stick. Now we're going to remove the hoop and trim away the excess batting from around the stitch line. Here's where the beauty of these curved scissors come in. You want to lift up on the outer edge just a little bit. Doesn't matter if it's got a few jagged edges. You just want to keep it as smooth as possible. This is what I was talking about. This is the um, Quilters Cut and Press and I really like this. Especially I like this hard side of it, not so much for cutting while I'm sitting here, but for doing this type of trim work. And then if I am doing a applique, I can use the other side with my little clover iron over here. And I can iron on my applique pieces right while I'm here at the machine. So I've got a pretty good process all set up. You're also going to want to have a trash can handy. You do a lot of trimming in this. Now it's time to put on a piece of, this is going to be the back fabric. If you are lucky enough to be a subscriber to the Creative Notions monthly subscription, you'll recognize this fabric from a bag project that we did a couple, uh, a couple of months ago. Oh, I like this. This looks good. Let me move this just a little bit more and I'm going to reach over here to my tape farm and I'm going to tape it nice and firm. I'm going to give this just, I'm not going to pull it too hard, but I'm just going to smooth it and this will hold it down while the needle goes around. Now it's going to tack down fabric for the backing piece. Now it's going to do the quilting stitches. Do not trim the fabric. Just go ahead and leave it as is. There's no trimming that needs to be done on this right now. I'll see you guys back here in a second.
Now we're going to put the flap down. You want to make sure that the fold is to your right and you need to mark an inch and a half from the outer stitching line. There you'll see two long stitching lines. The first one is the tack down for the outer for the fabric and the second one is the edge for the quilting, the inner one. We don't want to measure the inner one, we want to measure the outer one. So I'm going to put my ruler right at an inch and a half here and you can kind of tell where it needs to go by where the needle's going to come down. You want that needle to just catch the edge of that fabric. You want to make sure that your edge, your top edge is up here and down here are fairly even and that way you know you're going to have, see how this is even here? You know you're going to have good coverage. Tape this down as well. Make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Just like that. And an inch and a half. And you can use your stitching line as a guide and that way you know you got it straight. For your lining fabric, you need to measure one inch over from this stitching line right here and you want to put your fabric in right side down. Helpful if you have a little bit smaller ruler, that's always kind of handy. Let me find the one inch mark on this. Face down, one inch away from this stitching line. Now I'm going to show you, if your foot wants to catch up under here, kind of keep an eye on that and be prepared to stop the machine and prevent any kind of disasters. I'm going to show you, it's going to want to catch, watch. See how I stop that? Lift the foot fabric back under. Even if you taped it right here, some machines will catch it anyway. So I've, it's been my experience to just kind of keep your eye on it. Okay, we're all done with the first hooping. See how easy that was? Now you're supposed to trim it, but we're going to wait for the video's sake. I'm going to trim both the uh, front and back covers at the same time. On the luminaire, when it says finished embroidering, you say OK. I'm going to hit return, and I'm going to go delete. Is it OK? Sure. I'm going to pull up front cover. There it is. Notebook front. Set. Embroidery and we're ready to go. Just like the last time, we're going to make a placement stitch for the batting. And you put your batting down, just like last time. Make sure you have at least half an inch on either side by folding up an edge. Make sure you have both ends covered. Very good and the tack down stitch now for the batting. Don't be putting your hands in the sewing field like I do. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> now see what happened? I got a little bubble there because I didn't, either I didn't tape it or I didn't stretch it right and I need to fix that. So, take the hoop out. Let me show you how to fix that. I'm gonna take my seam ripper and be very careful and I'm going to uh, maybe about right here I'm going to go ahead and lift up one stitch maybe just a couple let's see and then I'm going to take the seam ripper and put the ball to the inside you want it on a flat surface and just kind of push it along. There we go. Perfect. Let me lay that out flat. Kind of lay that out flat. <clears throat> Let me go to my tape farm and do what I should have done from the get-go. And I'm just going to tape this down 
in a couple of spots. That was a Becky mistake. You know, that never happens, right? On most machines, and I know on all of the brother machines and the baby locks, there is a needle plus minus button. I'm going to touch that, and I'm going to hit minus 10 until I get back to before where I started that seam ripper. I put the foot down, and I'm going to go. And I got to put the little button down on the hoop, or it won't let me. There we go. Perfect. Now I'm going to trim away that excess batting. I'm going to put the back fabric, or I'm sorry, this is the front. I'm going to put the front piece of fabric over it. I'm going to make sure it's overlapped on both sides. This is going to tack down the fabric. Time for the quilting. line of stitching is for a placement line for the elastic and it's going to be really hard to see because it's in the exact same color as the current thread I don't feel like changing it so it is starting just on the right of this particular line of quilting you need to put your ribbon face down you want to take a little piece of tape and you want to put it about half an inch above the outside line of stitching and then give it a little tug not a lot just a little cut it now it's going to tack that down Now it's going to tack down the other end. That was actually a placement line. Now it's time to put down the flap. I need to measure an inch and a half from the outside line of stitching over here on my left side. And you want the flap fabric to be even with the top and bottom fabric edges. And I'm gonna put it right there and measure. Who'd have ever thought these little bitty rulers would be good for something? I'm gonna go ahead and tape down these edges just so we don't have any surprises. And then just like last time, we're going to measure over an inch from this stitching. Put the other piece of lining fabric face down. I'm going to measure in an inch. Be prepared for that foot to catch it. Right there. Lift up. That has happened every time, tape or no. And that is simply because of the amount of depth that we have underneath the foot 
if you have the ability to raise your presser foot, which I do, I just don't feel like doing it, uh, you should do that. Just be patient and watch. All right, we're all finished with the front cover. Now let's go to the cutting table and do some trimming. Okay, to trim these, you want to fold your flap, your lining fabric back. Not the flap, the lining fabric. This top piece, fold it all the way back. <clears throat> Let me get in here real close so you can see what I'm doing. So you want to fold this lining fabric back so that you can see this line of stitching, this outer line of stitching right here. You want to put your ruler right on it and then move it over to your right like a sixteenth of an inch. You want to be able to keep that stitching line because you're going to use it to position the rest of the project with the spine. See how you can just see that. That's perfect right there. Okay. Now to trim the rest of it don't trim off these outer edges. You just want to trim the stabilizer. So don't trim off the excess fabric. Just trim the stabilizer. It's just going to be easier to maneuver in the hoop with the stabilizer gone. And same for the other one. We're going to flip it over. We're going to pull this back again. Put your ruler just on it and then push it over just a hair. This is going to be the only fabric part that you cut during these trimmings. The rest of them, you're going to leave the seam allowances on for now. You know, I probably could get a little bit closer to that stitching line. I think I didn't, I think I went a little too far. There. That's better. So the only difference between the front and back are the sides of which way the flap fold points and the elastic on the top, on the front. So that's no elastic, that's the back. There's the elastic, that's the front. Back to the machine. All right, it's time to pull up the spine. I'm going to hit return and delete. Okay. We're going to go to the pocket wireless spine vert pen. It's going to stitch a single line right here. That's a placement line for one of the covers. Here to go. I bet you I run out of bobbin thread. I know I'm going to run out of bobbin thread. Let me stop this. Oh yeah, that was going to happen. I love the clear bobbin covers. Those are so handy. And the drop-in bobbin system from Brother is just wonderful. All right, so this is our third hooping. We need the back cover. And what I'm going to do, I know the thread is hard to see, but this, where this line of stitching is, is exactly where you want the top stitching line up here needs to match up with this stitching line. I'm gonna put a piece of tape to hold it down, and then you need it straight on here. What it's gonna do is like a blind hem stitch and it's going to stitch the back cover to the stabilizer. Now the same thing for the other side. fabric should just be at the edge of that placement line. Time for a batting placement line. Put your batting down, covering both sides by half an inch at least. When it's time to trim, we're going to trim on the sides only and leave the top and bottom.
time to put down the spine fabric. Be mindful if it's directional. Mine's not, but be mindful if it is. You know, it would be neat if you put like history or English up here if this was going to be for a school. Now you need to trim the sides of the fabric. I suppose you could trim these all at once, the batting and the fabric. Matter of fact, I think that's what the instructions say. Now it's going to do the quilting stitching, the vertical quilting stitching all up and down on the spine. And I'm going to go change a battery and be right back. It is time for the placement stitches for the pen pocket which is the same color as the thread I have been using. If your fabric is directional, you want to pay attention to that. It has two or three little stitches that mark the top. You want to just cover those. You want to make sure everything is nice and straight. Matter of fact, I'm going to pull it until the, I'm going to pull the fabric until it is just in the center of the foot. That way I know the top will be caught. If you're doing the pen holder, you want to trim this fabric now so that when the satin stitch happens, it will fully cover the edge of the fabric. Look how nice and close that is. That looks really good. Now, this is going to do a full set of three satin stitches here and here and here. This is why we needed the new bobbin. Time to change the thread for the pretty decorative stitch contrast in that big satin stitch that it just made. So I am creating a knot between the two threads at the top of the machine. And then I will pull it through here at the bottom. That is the easiest way to change threads. It has a color stop to give you a chance to change thread colors if you want. I don't want... Oh, that turned out so nice. Now it's going to do a placement stitch for the ribbon. You want the ribbon to stick up about half an inch above the stitch line and make sure your tails hang down below. Now you need to make sure you don't have any tape in the way of anything, so I'm going to go ahead this is not in the way of the stitching, but I'm just going to pull it off. And you just don't want any tape to be inside of the upper or lower boundary there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this ribbon and fold it up inside the flap. Not between the lining and the flap, but between the flap and the back cover. You want to push that up into there and get it out of the way as much as you can. Okay, the final stitches are the lining tack down. And so we're going to fold this. You want to take your front lining and fold it over, lay it out flat, and then you want to fold it back by one inch and put a little piece of tape if that makes life easier. You can kind of finger crease this. You want that just like that. Keep that nice and flat. And then you want to take the back cover lining and fold it over and lay it on top and take a little piece of tape on the outside of where the stitching line is going to go. And you can tell where that is 
by the row of stitching at the top and bottom. You just want to let it stitch and let it stitch the bottom down. And it's going to be below the line of stitching that it's that you see where the flap was sewed down. We are finished. Yay! Let's trim it up. All right, we need to trim away one quarter inch from the stitching. I prefer the look that I get when I have ironed the entire folding out process step by step. And I am going to trim the corners to get rid of bulk. All right. So I'm going to go press all this first. I just gave this a light press. You quilters know that it's good to just kind of relax all the stitches. These two flaps, leave them alone. Doesn't matter. You don't need to do anything with those. Now I'm going to turn these out. And before I finish it fully, oh gosh, look how cute that is. I'm going to go back to the ironing board and I'm going to press these flat and then I want to press them so that the white is to the inside of the blue just a little bit. I'll be right back. Okay, so I just did a good pressing so that when it's you see it from the front, you don't see any of the white material. Oh, there's a little bit. I might have to redo it there. And you want that in like this. It just gives you a better looking finish. And then when you flip it, you want to use a point turner or a chopstick and just turn these out. Oh, y'all, this is just darling. This fabric's adorable anyway. Now I'm going to go do the same thing. I'm going to give it a good press and I want, I don't want to have any orange showing out here. I want the blue to the outside. I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, guys, we're all finished. Look how this turned out. I am just tickled. I absolutely love these things. This is so nice. I'm keeping my video notes in here now. This was a lot of fun. All right, so start to finish took probably about mm, not quite an hour and a half. So if you're going to make one, you can time it accordingly. And of course it takes me a little bit longer because it takes me forever to figure out what fabrics I want to use. But this is a great project for scraps and uh, I just, I really think that if you guys make these, you're going to get demands for a lot of them. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and I hope you subscribe and I will be happy to make more tutorials if you'll leave a comment below and tell me something you'd like to see. Alright you guys, you go sew something. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.